So I just got word. You dirty dogs, you. Congress is gone to Colorado Springs and hiding under the bunkers, underground in the bunkers. Bring y'all asses out. Bring y'all. Don't go hiding. Don't try to hide no goddamn where y'all started this shit. Y'all bring y'all ass out here with the American people. Joe Biden, if you down there, you bring your ass out too. The captain goes down with the ship. How dare you cowards go hiding while we out here in the open. While the American people is out here can get bombed and everything else and y'all start the shit and y'all going to hide out? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Congress, bring your ass out. So I just got word. You dirty dogs, you. Congress is gone to Colorado Springs. If I'm not mistaken, it sounds like he's talking about um, Cheyenne Mountain, but nevertheless... Wisdom and knowledge is the stability of our time. And we are not to fear. Shalom. Call Lamla Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem or Gakadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son. And the Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor. To the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the apostles and elders and great millstone. Coming back at you on another lesson, who are we to fear? Who are we to fear? One of the things that makes the Bible so fascinating is how we keep seeing this same old song just play over and over again. These Israelites in the wilderness that were questioning the power of the Most High. Isn't that fascinating? Despite all the signs, the chariot signings, the massive global awakening the prophecies coming to pass Armageddon Joel chapter 3 Jeremiah chapter 50 Jeremiah chapter 51 Isaiah chapter 13 is on the horizon hey Revelation chapter 13 is unfolding more particularly the sea hip the little miniaturized digital device. So despite the prophecy speaking, and we know that the um, testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So Yahweh Shai is speaking to us in the last days. And regardless of that, we still have people that are clinging to their own ignorance. They're not leaning on a sure word of prophecy because they don't believe. They're trying to put on the tough guy image. Talking about a part two meeting up in Chicago, going against the Palestinians and these other reprobates out there. Absolutely asinine. So I want to go into what is the hidden treasure. What is it that some have that most don't that makes this thing so valuable? Let's go to Sirach 25. <clears throat> A book of Sirach 25, verse 10. Oh, how great is he that findeth wisdom, yet is there none above him that feareth the Lord. So high-ranking nobles are on the earth today, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. High-ranking officials are walking on the earth today. 
walking in the fear of the Lord, teaching daily. So these men are above your national leaders, your Congress, your Senate, your G8 and G7 summit meetings. But in your ignorance, you're missing them, overlooking them. <laughs> Let's go here real quick. Well, we got to read it again. Well, I want to go up. Sirach 25. Let's go to verse 7. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth will I utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. So this is what we're witnessing. But if you're walking in pride and willful ignorance, then it's easy to miss the obvious. Let's go here. Poor man's words. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 9 and 16. Ecclesiastes 9. Let's go to 15. And there was found in it. Ecclesiastes 9. We got to go up to. Let's go to 12. For man also knoweth not his time as the fish that are taken in an evil net and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. So wisdom and knowledge gives us the ability that we need to endure or durability to be tested or tried. And these men are not walking in wisdom, but in their own pride. <clears throat> they lack understanding. This is why the Most High said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So they have rejected knowledge. So they are walking in a rejected mind state, which is unstable, unstable ground. So they're going to be taken in the perils and the judgments to come. And this is the context of what we're reading. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. There was a little city and few men within it, and there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. So the king of Babylon is getting ready to make his move. The great red dragon, the international elites, are going to make a move on the Lord's scattered remnant, the elect, his people. Then let's go to verse 15. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. So just like Yahweh Shai was on the scene, and he came to deliver the captive daughter of Zion. He came to deliver Jerusalem, the Lord's people. But he was... Despised, rejected, hated. So now we have the reflection of Yahweh Shai, his ministers, the apostles, the elders, the prophets that are being rejected around the world. And here in the daughter of Babylon, that great city. So there's a lot of parallels that we can draw in this scenario here. <clears throat> and there was found in it a poor wise man and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no man remembered that same poor man then said I wisdom is better than strength nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised 
and his words are not heard. So just like Yahweh Shai, the light of the world, was rejected, despised, and hated among men, now his servants, the prophets, are experiencing a similar encounter. Because men love darkness rather than light. The words of a wise man. The words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. So remember, quite often Shai would speak to the disciples privately. He would speak to them because he would say, Unto you it is given. Let's go ahead and get that. Let's go to Matthew 13. So this wisdom is only reserved for a little sanctuary. The Lord's elect, his remnant. Those that have faith in him, that believe in him. Those that are hanging their head on all of the words written in this book. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that cometh out of this book. And I'm paraphrasing. Let's go here to Matthew 13. <clears throat> the book of Matthew chapter 13. Let's go to verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? So the disciples are asking Shai a question. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. So this is why we are to plant and invest what we have because it can be taken away and then labor in the field. And what I'm talking about, I'm speaking in the dark, saying be diligent and teach on what we have and what we know because it can be taken from us and the Lord can remove our candlelight or the Holy Spirit from us. Why you think King David said, take not thy Holy Spirit from us. So if we're sitting by idle, then that can happen. The oil can run out and the light burns out. So many people on the earth today are like this young man, scared, and there's no stability. So he is filled with terror. But he's fearing the princes of this world, the Dukes of Edom, the international bankers, the global elite. But he's not channeling that energy in the right direction, meditating on the spirit of the Lord, which is grounded in the word misguided understanding, if you will. <clears throat> See, let's go here to Sirach 19. Book of Sirach, chapter 19. Let's go to verse 18. Sirach 19. Let's go to verse 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtaineth his love. This is why Shai pulled the disciples off to the side, because he knew who the Lord was dealing with or had already chosen. Israel of God, if you will, and elect. So the elect's lights are burning bright. They have a seal of redemption that the angels can recognize. 
And Yahweh Shai, being that chief angel, recognizes who the Lord has anointed. That fear Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and think upon his name. Let's read it again. Sirach 19 and 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him and wisdom obtaineth his love. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. So this is the path towards Eden 2.0, the kingdom of heaven, paradise. It starts with the understanding that's going to save us. Wisdom is what's going to deliver the Lord's elect. Not guns, not swords, not tanks, fighter jets, bomber planes, nuclear missiles. We got to be saved from these wicked inventions. Artificial intelligence, digital chips. See? Sirach 19, verse 20. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law and the knowledge of his omnipotency. So the Lord is all power, not nuclear missiles, not fighter jets, not multiple rocket launchers, or MLRS, multiple rocket launch systems. Not machine guns and grenades or robots. So when we have this hidden treasure, then we have peace of mind. We're just watching the prophecies and hastening the establishment of a new holy righteous kingdom diligently laboring first peter 1 verse 17 and if ye call on the father who without respect of persons judge according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear so if we are diligently moving with the fear of the lord and moving in sincerity then we have nothing to fear other than fear itself. And our reverence and reverent fear ought to be in the Most High and Yahweh Shai. Verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Hamashiach as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So we have the day star in our heart, in our mind. Not only did he come on the earth about 2,000 years ago, but now he is dwelling amongst us or supping with us through the Spirit. This is how we're able to prophesy or predict the things that are to come. America has stirred up the hornet's nest. China is pissed off with America in its backyard. And interfering with China's belief that they have a right to Taiwan, a right to incorporate Taiwan underneath their domain of rulership in the Far East Asia, just like in the Middle East. These Arab nations look at America as interfering with these countries of Northern Africa, these countries of West Asia, and so forth and so on. So it's going to get worse before it gets better. So we have a we have a deposit 
the precious blood of the lamb. So this is an investment that cannot be trumped by man, that cannot be overcome by the carnal or the fleshly, the wicked, rebels, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. So this is why we have peace of mind because the creator of all things makes war, makes peace, create evil, and create good times or joy. So if we understand how the Most High operates, we fear him. And then we begin to rely on him because he is omnipotent, all powerful, that controls the breath we breathe, life and death, health, wellness, sickness. So this is where we're putting all our bets, all our investment, our time, our energy, our focus on the creator of all things. Isaiah 45, verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So this is what we have to be tapped into. This is the true meditation that we ought to be putting our focus towards. How to please the Heavenly Father. How to walk in His ways according to the gospel. Trusting on the Almighty, the same power that delivered us out of ancient Egypt. The same power that girded and protected us under every empire that we served in captivity and bondage. So this is how we can guarantee our survival by putting our trust on him and fearing him and his word. Let's go here. Let's go to the book of Psalms 146. Verse 3. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. So the prince of the power of this world is Esau, starting with the international bankers, or the Luciferians, the king of Babylon, followed by the kings of the earth, the dukes of Edom, so forth and so on. They don't will the true power, but the true power is held from on high that raises up one ruler and puts down another. So the power of the earth is in the hands of the creator. Let's go here. Sirach 10 and 4. Book of Sirach chapter 10, verse 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. So Yahweh Shai is getting ready to be raised up and occupy the throne of his father, David, followed by the nobles of the house of David, starting with the 12 apostles, followed by the 144,000 mighty men. So this is on the brink of being established here on earth. The Lord's tabernacle is going to be with men, his faithful men. <clears throat> That's enough there. Let's go back to that. Psalms 146, verse 3. 
put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, in that very day his thoughts perish. So their new world order is going to fade away like a small smoke stream and dissipate in the wind. Gone. Okay, as a dream deferred. That's not going to become fruition. It's going to die in place. Happy is he that have the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord, his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever. So this is our security blanket. This is our sure, solid foundation, the rock of our salvation. Yahweh Shai. So he's going to rightfully execute judgment on the earth. He is controlling the deliverance of Jacob. Everlasting joy and peace. An eternal kingdom. So this is where our energy should be. And focus. Right when I said it. 144. Look at the time. The Lord is our defense. The Lord is our solid rock and foundation. Our peace of mind. He is our help. Let's go here. John 14. Oh, look at the title. My goodness gracious. John 14. It says, Yahweh Shai comforts his disciples. He did it back then, and he's doing it now. And the disciples became apostles. Oh, he's doing it again. Every time we speak, Yahweh Shai speaks. Every time we rebuke, Yahweh Shai rebukes. Every time we correct, Yahweh Shai corrects. So he's comforting the, the faithful. <clears throat> Yahweh Shai comforts his disciples. John 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. So we cannot believe in the Most High Father if we don't believe in his Son that came on the earth in the flesh and walked among us. Why? Just like the prophets are angels in the flesh walking among us that really outrank the national leaders, the Senate, the Congress, the kings of the earth. Any king in his right mind will not undermine or marginalize his prophet, which is a direct link to the Most High, a direct link through Yahweh Shai. John 14 and 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. So that second return that we read about in Isaiah 11 is near at hand. <clears throat> Let's go here to the book of Psalms 43. <clears throat> book of Psalms chapter 43 in the KJV. Let's go to verse 3. O send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto the holy hill and to thy tabernacles. So this is what we're doing, moving onward and upward towards the light, the kingdom of heaven, following a well-lit path, following the ways of Yahweh Shai. That's the path. 
exit right, follow the well-lit lights. Remind me of a movie theater, which is a good analogy because it's everything is dark. So without these lights, we fall and stumble or we lose our footing. We slip. This word, the word is a lamp unto our feet. Is that not written? O oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me and let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. And then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my power. King David understood who to fear, where his help came from, his source of strength. Psalms 43 and 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my power. See? So this is our source of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Let's get it in another version. The NLT, Psalms 43 and 3, send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. These, I will go to the Psalms 43 and 4. There, I will go to the altar of God. To God, the source of all my joy, I will praise you with my heart, O oh God, my power. So this is how we're pursuing the promises, what's been told to us, told to our fathers. So we are the sons of the prophets. We were promised immortality. We were promised perfect bodies. No more sickness, no more death, no more pain, no more suffering, no more wars. So we are diligently and eagerly anticipating a righteous kingdom. So we believe in what we read. This is not a fairy tale story to us. And what we can conceive, we can achieve. Psalms 43 and 5. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Yahweh Shai and the Most High. Did not King David bow down to Solomon's feet, his Lord? His master, his power. Yes, he did. He bowed down to baby Yahawashai or young, excuse me, young Yahawashai. Bowed down before him. Let's go to Isaiah 51. The book of Isaiah 51. So Yahawashai is going to return with the chariots of our salvation. Isaiah 51, verse 11. Let's go to verse 10. Art thou not it which have dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that have made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over? Who delivered us out of ancient Egypt? Who saved our forefathers and our families. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I, even I am he that comforteth you 
who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die and of the son of man which shall be made as grass? So the spirit took me to Psalms 146, verse 3 through 5. We're not trusting in the kings of this earth, the dukes of Edom, the kings of the nations. When we went there. Wow. And sometimes the spirit will take me here. It is right here. The son of man that shall die. The prince of the power of this world or the king of Babylon is Esau, Edom. And he has a cohort of nations or kings under him. Wow. Psalms, let's go to Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. Wow, let's read this, verse 4. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My salvation is near. Say what? My salvation is near. My salvation is gone forth, and my arm shall judge the people. The owl shall wait upon me, and on my arm shall they trust. So the Lord is raising up his right arm that occupies the right side of the Most High. Yahawashai. Let's close out here. Same chapter in the N-E-T, the N-E-T, Isaiah 51, verse 10. Did you not dry up the sea, the waters of the great deep? Did ye not make a path through the depths of the sea, so those delivered from bondage could cross over? Those whom the Lord has ransom will return. They will enter Zion with a happy shout, unending joy with crown them. Happiness and joy will overwhelm them. Grief and suffering will disappear. So this is not the time to give out a breath, to fall out, to take our hands off the plow. Right when we're at the finish line, getting ready to break the tape on the track, if you will. See how the runners, at the end, they just, their chest sticks out and breaks the runner's tape. So this is a race, not a relay race or a speed race, but a marathon. It takes patience, diligence, sincerity, <clears throat> tenacity. Read that again. We'll close out. Isaiah 51, verse 11 in the NET. Those whom the Lord has ransomed and re will return, they will enter Zion with a happy shout. Unending joy will crown them. Happiness and joy will overwhelm them. Grief and suffering will disappear. I, I am the one who console you. Why are you afraid of mortal men, of mere human beings, who are as short-lived as grass? Why do you forget the Lord who made you, who stretched out the sky and founded the earth? Why do you constantly Tremble all day long at the anger of the oppressor when he makes plans to destroy. Where is the anger of the oppressor? So the Lord's spirit rests on the oppressor, the sword-wielding man or adversary. So relax, homeboy. The Lord is in control. So why should we be afraid of a man that the spirit of the Lord controls? There be 
spirits created for his vengeance. So the Lord created the smith that blow up the coals in the fire, that put the technology of these nuclear weapons in the scientist's mind. The Lord created the elements of the earth. The Lord raises up one kingdom and sets down another. So we ought to trust in him and fear him that made us the heavens and the earth and everything around us. He is omnipotent, all-powerful. So trust in the Lord with all our heart. That's what the Bible says. And that's what we're going to do. I don't want to rough design or Lord willing. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem. Yahweh Shai by Hashem. Barakat Kadash. Barakatam. See you on the next lesson. Lord willing. Palm Yasharala and the Bad Babal. We got next. Lord willing. Shalom.